Hello, it's Simon Phillips. Welcome to the eighth installment of Networking Not Working Here live on Facebook. And you can catch us up later on, um, well, it's actually live on YouTube, but you can also see it there later. Just go to youtube.com forward slash networking not working. You'll be able to see this um, episode again and also um, have a look at the previous episodes too. This is uh, an accompaniment to um, the book, The Complete Guide to Professional Networking, um, which I've put together with the uh, of Simon Elinas, who's done all the cartoons and caricatures as well. So today is all about how do we measure the effectiveness of our networking. Um, uh, quite a number of you have real challenges thinking about how much time should I be putting into my networking? It isn't free, as we'll, uh, as we'll discuss later. Um, and we're not always sure whether we're being effective. So uh, the networking scorecard is something I invented a few years ago now um, to just help me uh, understand where I was getting value from my networking activities and, uh, and how it was all, um, how all the various components of networking, if you like, came together to add value. Because as, as the quote from my book goes, let me just turn to it. Um, Albert Einstein once said, not everything that can be counted counts and not everything that counts can be counted. Basically what he was warning us about there is don't measure just for the sake of measurement, measure what's important. And that's what the networking scorecard is all about, measuring what's important for you as you start to build your networks. So um, the, the place to start here is that measurement itself can transform results. Um, somebody uh, I know through my uh, online network, a lady called Claire Jarrett, has absolutely transformed her business in the last year just by having an incredible focus on um, the specific metrics that are important for her business. Um, so she develops a lot of online content and helps others do the same so that they can um, generate income when they're asleep, I guess, is the, is the concept there. And um, by measuring the, the, the key metrics, if you like, or monitoring the key metrics that enables her to see which parts of her business need more fuel and which parts she can take the, the, um, her foot off the gas, she's able to um, work out very quickly where she's being effective. And as a result of that, she's gone um, from uh, sort of more of a startup feel to her business to being able to look at a million pound um, target, uh, which she's well on track for this year. So everybody knows those sorts of um, metrics work in marketing terms. But um, what I can tell you is that having that sort of um, funnel approach to your networking won't generate you the results that you're looking for. We're not putting people into a, um, a funnel, we're not putting them in at the top and waiting to see which ones drop out the bottom by a certain set of activities that will generally filter them through to the point where they're going to drop into our um, uh, profits machine, if you like. These are people that we're talking about. These are relationships, as we've talked about throughout this series. Um, so we need a different approach, but we can still measure whether we're being effective. And that's what I wanted to um, talk about today so that we can, um, over time, measure the effectiveness of the events that we attend. We can control our diary and we can just generally be more effective in the way we go about allocating our time because at the end of the day we've got businesses to grow we have um, activities to do for our employer and we have the bottom line to consider when it comes to um, our overall effectiveness um, so networking is just a part of what you can do to build your business to grow your um, your division and to increase profits and sales but it's not necessarily um, a direct relationship. It's not a case to do X and get Y.
we can do though and what, what, what I've proven uh, how many watts could I get in there what I've proven over the years with the clients that I've worked with is that there is a sense of cause and effect when we um, look at doing some of the important things that really help you build great relationships and if you do that then you will get the desired outcomes um, as long as you don't see it as um, as that's the only reason why you're trying to build relationships in the first place because that will reduce your authenticity people will see you coming a mile off and it's not what you're trying to achieve so um so that's what we're trying to do that's where we're uh, aiming to be if you like as a result of this process and um and that's what i want to talk to you about today and um, give you a sense of why keeping a track of some things will actually transform your results. So um, when we say return on investment, what are the real investments when it comes to networking? So um, online, it's potentially a little bit more difficult to capture, um, but offline, it's very obvious. Um, there's the time involved, obviously, up front. Um, and then there are the three Fs of fuel, food and fizz, as I call them. Um, so generally, networking events, whether they're breakfast events, uh, lunch times or evening um, activities, they, are, um, they require some travel. You've got to get there. Um, you've got to do some prep. Remember our five-step approach of doing some research on who's going to be there, who you might want to connect with, and who you might want to update your connection with and build relationship further. So, um, so yes, you need to do some prep up front and then get there, whether that be via a car or public transport or just um, you know the oldest form of transport in the world, your legs. Um, so you've got to get there. Um, once you're there, typically... Um, the the ticket price may include um, the food that you're going to have when you're at the event, um, but if not, then there may be a requirement to to put to your, put your hand in your pocket and pay for some food, and also buy some drinks depending on what part of the day it is. Um, so, actually capturing that is useful because I mean, if it's running your own business then um, you know you need to capture all those costs as legitimate business expenses anyway um, but that's not the the reason we're doing it in this context we want to know how much um, of an investment we're making into our networking activities so um, capturing those what those costs are um, will allow you over the year to see how much you've invested in networking so um, we need to, yes, we need to do that um, analysis of the investment up front before we can then understand what return we're getting on that. Um, and in the 80s, um, Michael Gerber and his work was, um, was all the rage because what he was saying was if you want to um, professionalize your business and um, take it to the next level, you need to start systemizing because once it's systemized it means that other people can do the same activities and your ability to um, impact a bigger market is automated if you like because you can then um, because the back office activities are systemized you can get out there and duplicate what you're doing with um, with your potential um, customers and uh, future prospects so um, the same is true in a networking context by systemizing um, some of the metrics around um, what you're doing when you're networking you will again be able to um, get more people on board and to support you in the activities that you're that you're running with so um, I would recommend a weekly review of the activities that you've been involved in what actions you've taken excuse me what actions you've taken this week and um, any that are outstanding will then be obvious as you review your activity and the key then is to, um, to plot out what actions you're going to take next week who you want to follow up with who you need to um, uh, send some connections who are you actually going to connect 
and who do you need to thank for any um, connections that have been sent your way. So um, that's just a, it's, it's a quick review, but it is a systemized approach to um, your networking activities. And pretty soon um, you'll start to identify where you're being most effective whether that's where you're being able to be the most supportive or where you've got a network that's supporting you really well. Um, so that's what, um, that's what I mean by systemizing your networking. And um, as you'll see, when, we, when I show you the networking scorecard, it facilitates that sort of systemization of your activity. And um, most crucially, it allows you to duplicate your efforts and involve a team of people who can do the same thing as you. So that's, uh, that's a quick review of how to systemize it. And if it's just you and your business right now, still do that because um, you will quickly see where you're being most effective and, um, and compare that, as we'll talk about later, to other activities that you're doing to promote your business. So um, all that's all well and good. Um, but what, apart from the costs involved and the other um, investments of time, are we um, seeking to measure? Well, here, um, when I was putting the networking scorecard together, I started to consider what was it that the great professional networkers did? Um, and I thought, well, if I, if I focus my efforts on getting better at doing the things that they do, then surely the outcome is I'll have a stronger network, I'll have a network of people that are um, differentiated by the support they're providing for me and my business activities, um, but also they're differentiated by geography and uh, interests and um, yeah, all the different, you know, different parameters, if you like, that you might want to set um, with regard to your networks. So what the great networkers do is they help and support people in their network. They're also very organized and they're also great connectors. So with those three components in mind, I set about designing the networking scorecard. So what I wanted to measure was how organized I was being. I wanted a tool that would enable me to be organized when it came to networking activities. I wanted a tool that would help me um, connect, whether that's me providing connections to others or um, a tool that would help me um, remember which connections I'd promised and also um, just capture who's connecting me um, to others in, in their networks. So, um, so that was that angle. And then the final one was just that point about helping and supporting others. Um, I recognized very early when I started networking that um, my natural propensity to want to help was actually a real um, bonus when it came to um, building my reputation in my networks. So whilst that was um, fairly natural for me to think about, if that's not um, an instinctive thing for you, then the networking scorecard is going to really help because um, it will just get you focused on the things that are important as you go about your networking activities. So supporting people, being organized and being uh, great at connecting is what the great networkers do. So that's what drives the metrics behind the networking scorecard. So um, I do consider my um, both aspects of online and offline um, networking as, as one in my head, but there are um, subtle differences, if you like, that I'm um, capturing as I go about those activities so that I can be more organized. So at offline events, um, if I meet somebody new, then I want to um, capture their details. Usually I capture them in uh, straight onto my smartphone, um, but uh, it, along with the networking scorecard, I've then got two um, things, two places, if you like, that I've captured those new people that I meet. Um, and I'm listening. Do you remember when we, we said about the five steps to effective um, networking? We talked about the importance of listening and uh, tuning into what it is the individuals that we're meeting 
um, that they need right now or what they're looking for, what do they want. Um, and I'm also listening out for updates from the people that I um, already know in my network so that, again, um, as I come away, my mind can be thinking about who would be a value in my network to connect them to. So, um, as I say, the focus is on listening when we're out there um, building our networks. And um, those are the specific things that I'm interested in uh, when I'm networking offline. So at the breakfast events that you're attending, those that's the sort of the, um, the key thing that you want to be doing is listening, listening out for where you can add value to the people in your network. Online is similar. We definitely want to be um, virtually listening to our networks, trying to see where um, people in our networks need some support, um, such that when we're ready with a business proposition of our own, we've established great relationships and we're likely to be um, sending our requests out into an environment in which we have a great reputation already. So um, online is about keeping in touch. And that's uh, you know hugely um, simple when we think about LinkedIn and Twitter and Facebook and Google Plus. All of those platforms allow us to keep in touch really simply. And um, for those of you who are into Instagram and um, uh, Pinterest and other um, platforms out there, keeping in touch has become um, incredibly easy. And uh, getting back in touch with old contacts um, has been simplified uh, no end. So that's the number one thing we're doing when we're trying to understand where we, how we can add value and what sort of things we might want to capture in our weekly review of what the, the networking activities we've been up to this week. So um, keeping in touch, delivering benefits. Um, if we're listening, we can hear what our network's looking for. And if we then um, see an article or a piece that would be interesting to them, or we um, stumble upon a new connection that we can immediately refer through our networks, then we're delivering benefit all the time. We're also using online um, tools to research both the individuals that we're meeting, but also the, the op opportunities for them that are available through our network. So we're researching so that we can engage better. Um, I talked to you about the imp um, importance of engagement when we were looking at the tools for the job uh, um, a couple of weeks ago, because on Twitter and Facebook and LinkedIn and Google Plus, it's not um, who can you broadcast to, who can you send information out to, but it's how well you can engage with the key people in your network such that um, they understand almost at a biological level, um, what it is that you um, add in terms of value that they can promote through their networks. Um, so engagement is the key activity, if you like, that we're looking to do through those networks. And um, finally, connections, um, just as important as, um, as they were in that offline context, how can we connect people through our online, um, online activity too? because um, what we're trying to do overall is assess the value for money that we're getting through our networking activities. Now, I'm well past that stage. Uh, since 2000, when I've been building my own business, as I mentioned in a previous webinar, um, I've spent very little money on um, traditional marketing. So I see my networking activities as, an, as a marketing strategy. It's a long-term approach to building great relationships, identifying opportunities, being of real value to the people in my network. And as a result, I've found when I've had things that I want to do or um, they've had projects up and running where they can identify how I could contribute to that, those connections um, have blossomed in terms of uh, business uh, opportunity. And I, um, so I know intuitively now, if you like, the value I get through networking. However, if you're new either into the world of business or the world of entrepreneurship and you're not as 
certain as I am um, that network's going to pay for you, then the networking scorecard will really help you understand the value for money you're getting by being out there and being active online and offline in, uh, in building your networks. Um, so I talk in the book about a group um, that I was working with a few years back um, that were um, a sales team for a mobile phone uh, company. Uh, they were a national team and they were, at the time, they were aimlessly networking and they weren't even networking effectively. So we did some uh, workshops with them to talk them through the, the five-step plan, the value in understanding that this is all about relationships and it's all about building um, value for your networks and not just waiting for them to deliver um, money into your pockets. Um, so, so we did some workshops with them around that. I then introduced them to the networking scorecard and it totally transformed the, um, both their approach to um, networking and also the um, out, outcomes, if you like, that they were achieving as a result of becoming um, the most valued um, people in their offline networks. So what had been happening before we um, started working with them? Well, they, as a mobile operator, um, back uh, you know, a number of years ago, if you were if you were a salesperson for a mobile um, phone company, invariably you were invited to networking events, or you sought out networking events as a potential sponsor. And the mindset was, if we are there and people can win one of our phones, um, then you know we're, we're going to be featured and we, we will be visible, and people will obviously. Uh, by our phones. Um, so there was no shortage of events that this sales team were getting invited to all across the country. Um, but the reality was they were, they were really only being invited for the freebies that they could provide. Um, they came away with lots of business cards. Sometimes that was orchestrated because um, people were entering competitions to, uh, to win the phones or um, just by having a few conversations, they were picking up lots of business cards. But the reality was at the back end of all of this, they had an enlarged cold database. These weren't really um, strong connections. They were just people that were interested in winning a free phone. Um, and so they were no further ahead than they would have been um, from just buying a cold uh, set of uh, customer data. So, um, so they were, they, they were, if you like, questioning the value of these networking events. So by talking to them about having a more relationship-based approach to networking and introducing them to the networking scorecard that I'm going to show you in a minute, um, they were able to transform the way that they engaged with people at events. They were much more concerned with building great relationships, starting new friendships, um, connecting people, and also um, providing referrals where they could, and just generally being supportive. So they weren't there as representatives of the mobile phone company. They were there as uh, Dave, who was one of the, the, um, the main guys that immediately sprung to mind then. Um, Dave was one of their you know, leading salespeople, but wasn't actually generating a lot of sales through these events. Um, but by taking this approach, which was a much more relationship-based um, approach, they um, very quickly actually transformed their effectiveness. And the other thing that they did was they pooled the requests for um, referrals and connections. So Dave, who was the guy I was working with, who was uh, based down south, um, would go along to events People would tell him who they were looking to connect to just as another individual in their network. But of course, he had access to a national team. So the team started sharing at their weekly review. They, they shared the requests they'd had in. And um, between them, they started to make some fantastic referrals. And all of a sudden, as I said, um, at the start of this case study, they became the most valuable people in the network. So how are you? going to become 
the most valuable person in your network such that when people have a job that needs to be done and you and your business or your company um, can provide those services, you're the one that they want to come to. Um, well, the way to do it is to take a long term um, mindset along to all of your networking activities and take along your networking scorecard. Um, it's as plain and simple as this. Um, now, I know you can't necessarily read all of the um, uh, uh, cells in this um, scorecard, so I'm going to read them out to you in a moment. There's also um, a blog that you'll find a link to on the networking not working page um, and if you go there you'll see a version of this um, semi-completed or rather completed from a from a fictional event that I attended a, a little while back so um, let me read to you the elements of the networking scorecard so you can get a feel for what it is that is you can measure that will actually make a real tangible business to a, a tangible difference to your business. So um, right at the top are new connections. What new connections have you made, either this week online or at a specific event? Um, which follow-ups have you booked? So this is where we're starting to get organized with our networking. So we've actually captured the uh, names of the individuals that we've booked a follow-up with so that we don't forget. And if we have forgotten, by the time we come around to our weekly review, we're going to have this um, scorecard with us and any others from the events that we've attended. And um, we will then be able to plug these into our diary. Connection requests. So that team I was talking to you about with the, with the mobile phone company, um, this is where they were capturing any specific requests that they picked up in their conversations. They pulled those and they were able to get back out to individuals with some great connections. Of course, these days, with the power of LinkedIn and Google Plus in particular, um, we can pretty much find anyone for anyone um, and make those great connections that are going to make us a valued person in our networks. Connections made. So we're also sometimes able to connect people at the event because somebody might say to us, I need um, I need a great printer and we can you know maybe just through our smartphone we're able to locate a great printer or remember one or recall one that we've worked with recently and we can make that connection there and then so it's not about necessarily always taking them away from the event before we can make the connection referrals received who's given us a great referral um, the reason we capture those is for two reasons one so we don't forget the name of the person we've been referred to but secondly of course and potentially more important so that we can thank the individual later and make sure that they um, get the recognition they deserve for having referred us on um, so that's one being organized it's two valuing the connection we received and it's three ensuring that the individual who um, has made the referral gets the thanks that they deserve but also um, we're helping them build their recognition through the networks that they're building um, and the next category is network updates that's where we bump into someone we already know and they tell us about a new project they're working on or some new challenges that they have or a, new, a promotion that they've just received and again it's so that we can follow up effectively and continue to build um, a great relationship finally it's expenses and the time we've taken to put into our networking activity for um, for that sort of medium term perspective on the investment we've made into our networks so if you do all of that and you bring that along to your end of week review whether it's on your own or with a team um, you will start to do all of the activities and focus on the right things at the events that you attend or the time that you spend online um, and as I say in the uh, in the blog that will genuinely transform your networking from a bit of a splatter gun um, uh, um, approach which is not de delivering anything um, to something that's much more focused much more value driven and much more focused on adding value to the people in your network rather than trying to sell them on the services that you deliver. So 
Um, it's all focused on building great relationships. So I would recommend you um, building that scorecard for yourself. I'll also be putting this template up onto the Networking Not Working um, page. So look out for that this week. And by all means, share it far and wide um, because you will, you know, there and then you'll be providing a value added service to the people in your network. Okay, that's it for this week. Next week, we're going to pull it all together and assess what it takes to become the complete professional networker. Um, so don't miss that one. And uh, by all means, refer your friends on to this as well. And, uh, and hopefully between us, we can start to um, st uh, build a bigger picture of what it's going to take to become the complete professional networker. So see the blog for the networking scorecard and um, have a fantastic week. And I'll see you back here next Friday. All the best.